Let's talk about one of the most classically interesting and modernly misunderstood and frustrating topics that you talk about in mathematics. And that's the idea of conics. So if I take a cone and then I take another cone, flip it upside down and have them touch at the tips, what I find is I can find some really interesting geometric objects by slicing the cone. So if I take if I were to take you know, an infinitely thin sheet of paper that's razor sharp and I were to you know, sling it like a frisbee, just whip it and slice right across, across a cone, you could probably imagine what that looks like if I cut off the top of a cone and I look at the top of it, I see a circle. Right? I just see, oh, I cut off, I get a circle. Right? So what's neat about that is that you know, based upon how uh, tall you, or how high in the cone you are when you slice it, you can discover the radius, and then if you, and then you can talk about the center. Now, algebraically, the way we represent this is with this type of equation: x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Now, what this really is is that this is the center point. H and k is that center point. So those are really just um, shift, hor you know, horizontal and vertical shifts. And then r is the is the radius. Now, what I want you to notice is that y is not a function of x, right? When we deal with a circle, it, it's not it's not what we think of as a function because it wouldn't pass that vertical line test. But nonetheless, it's still a relationship of how x, y, and r all relate to each other. So, this is kind of the sh the the shifting around of your center, and r is your radius. Now, another way you could write this. This is very uncommon. But the way that it's written is this same form, but instead you have this r squared on the bottom. And then that would be equal to 1. The reason why that's a helpful way to write this, and you don't see a lot of people write this for some reason, I think this is a fantastic way. Well, the reason why it's helpful is if you keep looking over here, you see something that looks very similar. But instead of having r squared, you have b squared and a squared. So in this particular case, these two, it's the same equation. But these two are, are different values. They, B and A don't necessarily, actually they don't equal each other. If they do equal each other, you actually have this case. So what am I referring to? I'm referring to something called an ellipse. If I took the same cone and I took that, slide, uh, that sheet of paper and I went and I, I did my little karate chop and I hit it at an angle and you looked at that cone, you wouldn't see a nice clean circle. You would hit it at an angle. So what you have is an oval. Right where you hit it, it would it would go along that line. So you would have this stretched, this stretched region. So you now have again you have an oval instead of a circle, and that's the idea of an ellipse. An ellipse is just sort of like somebody took a circle and was like <clears throat> pulled it and kind of stretched it out. And what this a and b or b and a. One of them is referred to the major axis and the minor axis, and those relate to which one's wider than the other, or which one's larger. So that tells you whether or not it stretches this way or stretches that way. And as we go further into this, we'll talk about each of these in more detail. But the idea here is this is also the same idea. It's just the center. It's moved over. And these values tell you, instead of a radius, they tell you about essentially how long and how fat sort of some people will call it a tall ellipse or a fat ellipse, right? That's the idea. And that's and these are the, the two forms, depending on which one has the larger value. All right, anyway, let's keep moving along. Now, an ellipse is one that you you may have seen. You or I know you're familiar with a circle by this point. You're not watching this video if you don't know what the circle is. But you may have not messed much with an ellipse. However, what you might have seen before and hopefully have, is the idea of a parabola. So again, take the same sheet of paper, and this time we're going to cut it, but we're not going to cut it across. We're going to cut it through the top. We're going to kind of go through the head and out the bottom. And uh, if, you are to, if you cut it that way, what you're going to see is that you have this flat line across where you cut it, and it's going to go all the way down, and it's going to hit a point, and... Um, one second. Apologize for that. It's going to go across this line. It's going to come all the way down to a point and go back up. So it's going to have that same parabolic 
behavior. Now, the, the formula for a parabola is x minus h squared equals 4p times y minus k, or you might flip it. Now, what these are, are these are the equations for, this is, this is like the parabola you're used to. Now, it looks different, right? Usually you're used to seeing something like, you know, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, or y equals a times x minus h squared plus k, those sorts of, those sorts of formulas. This looks different, and it should. Um, the reason being is we're going to be, we're going to figure out what this P is and what that does. These, the center is still the same, but this is basically Y equals X squared. And I mean, this, you know, got extra pieces, but that's the parabola that opens this way. But this form is a parabola that kind of opens to the side. Think like, um, if you have Y equals square root of X, you know, you kind of have half a parabola. Imagine if you filled that all the way out. So that would be like X equals Y squared. That would be your, your parabola that opens horizontally as opposed to opening vertically. And these are all useful to talk about because in this particular case, we're not really worried about y being the function of x. We're just looking at what we're describing. Now, and so again, we're going to talk more about this, but that's how you get there. But what if I didn't cut it at an angle? What if I still cut it in the middle, but I cut it straight down, right? So instead of cutting like this, I just cut straight down. What happens? Well, if you think about it, you're going to cut, so you're going to have this solid line. But instead of that, that sort of curves or that almost that ellipse that you're going to get, you're going to get something that stretches. It's going to kind of, it's, it's, it's going to have kind of a sharper, a sharper curve down. I, it's hard to describe. And I'm doing my very best to draw it here, but you'll notice it still looks a lot like a parabola. But this is the idea of the hyperbola. So hyperbolas, and we'll talk more about that as we get into its individual uh, discussion. But hyperbolas, notice in this particular case, you get two of them. So a parabola, you get one curve, and a hyperbola, a hyperbola you get two curves. And specifically, there's a little, I should have done this, this is where we would have been more helpful is that there's a little x. I don't do it perfectly here, but there's a little x there that kind of that kind of bounds and it rides the line and asymptotically goes towards these x's. So you can draw these two lines and the hyperbolas they they go in towards each other and out towards each other. So they kind of have this x style. So think of like a highway on ramp. The highway on ramp is hyper, hyperbolic because you're you, the way you kind of merge on, it has that sort of bend, and then eventually you, you match the trajectory of the traffic. That's the same idea. Um, they're in, actually, it, it's designed based on hyperbolas. And so, anyway, we're going to talk a lot about these. Now, the hyperbola, uh, I do want to point out here that notice that it looks a lot like the ellipse, except instead of a plus, there's a minus here. So these are, these are very closely related except that you have a minus. And, and depending on where the minus is, it tells you essentially how it opens, whether it opens like this way or whether it opens that way. So again, we're going to talk through each one of these, and it's going to be really interesting. And these are really, really powerful tools because you'd, you find a lot of physical systems can be modeled by all of these things. So circle, obviously. Circle models all kinds of stuff. An ellipse, that's uh, orbits of planets are elliptical. They're elliptical orbits. They're not circular orbits. They're, they, they're not even really elliptical orbits, but they're kind of, they're, they're closer to ellipse, ellipses than they are circles. Uh, parabolas are everywhere, but they, we can use, we actually use them in the design of things like parabolic microphones. If you've seen a, um, you know, a, a, a sports game where they're trying to, figure out what the coach is saying on the field, right? So like football game. And they have this little microphone and it's got the little mic right in the middle of a dish. That's a parabolic dish. And it uses properties of the parabola to make sure that the sound bounces exactly to that microphone so it picks up really, really clearly. It's really impressive technology, but parab parabolic behaviors are like that. Hyper hyperbolas, hyperbolas actually happen 
like in bending, like if you have bending of wires and things, that tends to bend more like a hyperbola. Again, it's used in traffic design. These things are everywhere. So understanding them, seeing them, knowing how we can use them to not only understand phenomena, but build models and things like that, this is going to be really important if you're the type of person who wants to see how math can be useful in real life.